Southland fans and players celebrating the magic that is the old log of wood. Promising first 5'8", Robbie Robinson ending a game in which the Stags roared. The mighty man of the Deep South tenaciously ending Canterbury's reign in a low-scoring affair. Robinson's third penalty, clinching a 9-3 match-winning scoreline. Canterbury desperately needed the likes of all-black reject Isaac Ross to step up, but the in-your-face stags continually put Ross and co. off their game. The Red and Blacks not helped by the early loss of skipper George Whitelock in the 18th minute. Hesitancy under the high ball led to the first of Southland's three penalties, the Stags levelling at three all at half-time and sensing something special was within their reach as the likes of flanker Tim Boyce threw everything at the holders. Southlanders grow up on Swedes, Cantabrians grow up on corn. Look at the size of a corn. The Swede is full of substance and beauty. A team full of little buttes like hooker Jason Rutledge, who may not have worn the all-black jersey like his dad and team manager Lester, but he'll have bragging rights when it comes to the Ranfilly Shield. And if the NZRU needed a reason to reconsider cutting back the Air New Zealand Cup from 14 teams to 10, they may have found it, with Southland beating a Canterbury side without eight all-blacks, making them a shadow of their usual super rugby inflated self. The Stags taking full advantage of the level playing field and winning the log of wood. Their goal is now the Air New Zealand Cup title. It took Hawke's Bay no time at all to show how much they wanted a place in the semis. Weak effort from Lockie Munro and Cooper will score the first try for the Pies. Matt Berquist has been a reliable point scoring machine for the Magpies, this penalty making him the first to 150 points this season. And though Northland had more than their share of the ball, two tries by Hawke's Bay's forwards had them 27-6 in front. Now Tom Alolo on a shot ball! Right. Hold up, Berquist. Standing to his right. And they go inside, inside ball, it's a try! Carlo! Thomas Waldrum had a chance to give his boys the bonus point, but failed. He wasn't about to muck it up twice. Looking for numbers, they've got Waldrum! No one in front of him, and Thomas Waldrum gets there! The Tanifa added a last-minute try, but the 32-13 win gives the Magpies the bonus point they so desperately wanted. And Blenheim, Piriwepu led his side out in honour of playing in his 50th game, and his teammates presented him with a polished try to open the scoring. Ramsey for the corner. But Tasman were quick to find the line themselves. Goodman drops a little kick through. Here they come. What a lovely try, James Marshall. Up 13-7 at the break, Conrad Smith came on for Wellington, given special leave from the ABs to get some game time. But it was Tasman who were playing like stars, claiming their second try. They go to the line, and they score. But it was the Lions kicking that was the difference, beating Tasman 22 points to 14. Debbie Cronshaw, 3 new. Buckethead fans were out in force for their team's final game of the season, all hoping it wouldn't be the last time they'd see them in action in the top flight. Both sides were playing for nothing but pride, but it was Manawa too who made their fans proud early on. Very good counter rucking from Crosswall, a flat pass. Andre Taylor, just a no one in front of him in the right hand corner. What about that? North Harbour are 10 from 10 in matches against Manawatu and they soon had an 8 point advantage thanks to winger Rudy Wolf. One shows the ball, Aaron James is coming across in the cover, Rudy Wolf, too quick. But the Turbos turned it up in the second half, showing why they are the fourth best attacking team in the competition. Tried to go on the outside, then a buffalo and a tackle for me. A little ball on the ground, can he get there? No, yes! After eight straight losses, Manawatu finished the game and their season on a high, running in five tries for their first ever win over North Harbour, 42-16. The Hawke's Bay team, like Waikato spectators, could only watch and hope, but for different outcomes. 
Hawks Bay needed some luck, Waikato needed four tries and a bonus point, and Auckland needed, well, just to show they could play good rugby. Waikato guilty of taking their eye off the ball. But they quickly refocused on the prize. Touch, touch, call. It was Auckland that tackled as if they could make the semis. Beautiful defence, Benson Stanley. With only one try ticked off and two points behind, Waikato came out strongly after the break. Great start to the second half for Waikato. It's their second try, and Auckland have some more problems to deal with. But Auckland posed some teasers of their own. Spamoina driving, surging, scores! As time ran down, the Moolies' desperation turned to frustration. Ball, but it's there. Well, it should be there for Waikato. Oh, no. The 26-18 win, cementing Hawke's Bay in fourth place. The Magpies will fly south to Christchurch, while both Auckland and Waikato's seasons are over. Di O'Connell, 3 News. It was the Bay who were too good for the Naki in the first half, Jason Honor scoring twice to help his side to a 24-6 half-time lead. But Taranaki hit back hard in the second, scoring 24 unanswered points, and they hit the front with five minutes remaining thanks to Paul Perez. Loose pass, picked up by Perez! Taranaki in front. Despite a last-minute surge by the Bay, Taranaki hung on to win 30-24. So here are the playoff matchups. Canterbury will host Hawks Bay next Friday night in the first semi-final. On Saturday night, it's Wellington at home against Shield holders Southland.